<laughs> my name is Chris. Sorry. Um, do you want me to go ahead, Tim? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Thanks for being here today. Uh, Crystal Campbell is our guest, and she's from Dane County Land and Resources. And she's going to give us a tutorial on, on water and I think some stormwater stuff. So we appreciate you being here. Sure, no problem. So my name is Crystal Campbell. Like Tim said, uh, I am the stormwater education coordinator for Dane County Land and Water Resources Department and the Madison Area Municipal Stormwater Partnership. And just to give you a little background on, uh, especially we call it MAMSWAP, uh, the Madison Area Municipal Stormwater Partnership is just a partnership of about 21 municipalities, of which Stoughton is one of them. We are all part of a common stormwater, um, stormwater excuse me, permit. So a part of a group permit and that has common um, stormwater requirements that all these municipalities have to meet. Uh, one of them being uh, an education and information requirement. So to do some education and outreach uh, to engage the community and, and, and others, businesses, contractors around stormwater issues. So uh, that's, that's kind of my role uh, for Dane County and uh, really to also develop outreach campaigns and programs that our municipalities, again, including Stoughton, can use and can implement and modify um, locally. So we're going to be talking a little bit about um, primarily about uh, leaf free streets for clean waters today, uh, the, our fall, our fall campaign and program, but I'll also kind of touch upon some of our, of our other, other programming that we have uh, available um, to people like you and to our municipalities. So really the goal of, of our, our group is, uh, is to reduce stormwater. So the quantity of stormwater that gets into our lakes, rivers and streams, and also to improve the quality of the stormwater that makes its way to our lakes, rivers and streams. So um, if you don't know much about stormwater um, in this area in Dane County, all of our water that ends up in our storm drains, uh, down our ditches, um, that all ends up in our lakes, rivers, and streams without being cleaned. We have a separate storm sewer system here, or a separate sewer system uh, in Dane County and most of Wisconsin, where our sanitary sewer is separate. So our water that we use inside that flushes down the toilet that we use in showers uh, goes to the wastewater treatment plant first and gets cleaned before it gets discharged back into our um, streams and our rivers. Uh, and then our sewer system, our storm sewer system is separate. And whatever ends up in our storm sewer system through our storm drains uh, does not get cleaned before it ends up in our lakes, rivers, and streams. And we're really trying to uh, do our part to, to keep that water as clean as possible and keep our lakes, rivers, and streams clean as possible, not only for the aquatic life that lives in there, but also um, for all of us and uh, for recreational purposes. So just a little bit of background on stormwater. All right. Oops. For some reason. Okay. Did it click over to the next slide? I was lagging here. Oh uh, yes. It did. Okay. So before I start uh, talking about uh, our Leaf Free Streets program, I just wanted to give you a little background on leaves and and what the issue is with leaves. Why is it? Why are leaves bad for water quality? And um, this is uh, just a little background on, on a USGS City of Madison leaf study that we were involved with, uh, MAMSWAP was involved with, and Dane County was involved with. Uh, it's been going on now since probably, I think about 2015, and it continues. Uh, the study has continued to be funded uh, through, through even this year and next year. And I know Stoughton uh, actually put some funds in uh, for this study as, as did Dane County and MAMSWAP. So I just wanna give you a little background on this study. <clears throat> I think it'll help you understand kind of the leaf issue a little bit better. So uh, through this study that happened in Madison, uh, the goal of the study uh, was really to determine if removing leaves from the streets um, can help improve water quality and reduce nutrients to our local water, so our lakes, rivers, and streams. And the nutrient we're really, really concerned about, uh, and you probably know this already, but it's phosphorus. So phosphorus uh, is something we're really, really trying to keep out of our lakes, rivers, and streams because it's it fuels algal growth and um, and plant growth. So all those uh, algal blooms that we've seen, you know, the past summer, a few summers. Uh, Phosphorus is really the driver of that. So we're trying to reduce our phosphorus loads to our lakes, rivers, and streams. So uh, 
what happened in this study is there were two uh, neighborhood sites, so urban sites in Madison, on the west side of Madison, uh, very similar um, tree canopy. So we were really looking for, or I shouldn't say we, we helped fund it, but USGS ran the study. They really looked at uh, a couple of sites that had similar tree canopy, so street tree canopy. So when I talk about, you, you might hear me say this um, throughout the presentation, but um, street lee or street trees. So not necessarily the trees that are in your yards, but those those trees that are along the side of the road, uh, along the terrace. Those are what are problematic. So uh, they had two sites selected um, on the west side of, of the west side of Madison. Both had uh, about 17% tree canopy, um, primarily ash and maple covering the street. So these are larger trees, not your little saplings, <laughs> larger, you know, big trees uh, that kind of um, cover cover the street. And what they did to try to determine if if leaves are really um, you know, a problem for fall leaf fall is a real problem and a real contributor to the phosphorus that ends up in our lakes, rivers, and streams is they, they had a control site and they had a test site. And the control site, they did nothing with. Um, so throughout uh, the fall, they didn't clear the leaves at all. So I know many of our municipalities, Stoughton included, um, have leaf uh, programs, um, leaf pickup programs, street cleaning programs, uh, Madison does as well. Um, but in the control site for this study, they did nothing in that area. So they didn't clear the leaves at all throughout the fall. They just let them fall. Um, in comparison to the test site where they cleared right before the rain, they cleared out those leaves right before the rain. I mean, kind of the gold standard. No, no municipality would ever clean, uh, clean the site as much as, as USGS did during this study, but it really gave us a good comparison. So right before the rain, uh, USGS would be out there clearing those leaves out of the street, clearing them out of the gutter so that that street was as clean as possible before the rain. So what we found out uh, from this study when we compared the two sites was that it made a huge, huge, huge difference when we were able to clear those leaves off the street before the rain. So it's really the timing uh, is, you know, if it didn't rain all fall, it wouldn't really be a problem. It's really the fact that uh, we need to clear those leaves off the street before the rain. So um, what happens if you don't, if you don't kind of know what happens uh, when the rain falls, it goes through the curve line, right? It, all that rain collects in the curb line. That's how streets are designed. And the problem is, is that yes, the, the leaves do clog up the storm drain sometimes. And some of those leaves actually get to our lakes, rivers, and streams. But it's not the leaves themselves so much that get there. It's the fact that the water flows through these leaf piles in the curb line. And it creates this leaf tea, we like to call it. And that leaf tea is rich in phosphorus. So, and Worse yet, it's rich in dissolved phosphorus. So dissolved phosphorus is like candy for that algae. Um, and it's really, really high in dissolved phosphorus. So what we found when we did the, um, the leaf study is when we compared the area that had no leaf removal whatsoever with the, with the area that you know, had the gold standard, that had the leaves cleared out right before the rain, before every rain event, there was a huge, huge reduction in phosphorus. So if you kind of look at this top, and I don't think you can see my cursor. Can you see my cursor here if I'm, no, <laughs> okay, you can't, okay. Um, so you can see, and they actually, they actually um, monitored uh, the water quality from April through November. Um, and you can see there's not much change here from April through August through September. It's pretty much the same. And yes, there's some phosphorus that comes from uh, grass clippings, but those don't really end up in the street as much. Um, what we saw though, come September through November was that when we compared the area, so orange is active leaf removal. Again, the USGS cleared those street leaves that the phosphorus levels were so much lower compared to the area that had no leaf removal. Um, and you can kind of look at it down here. Uh, when you compare kind of this, and again, it's seasonal here, but you compare the concentrations in the spring and the summer, they went down a little bit. Um, but when you compare the fall concentrations, they went down tremendously um, when we were able to clear those leaves out of the street before the rain. Uh, I, so this is kind of our proof and our, and our data, and we love data. <laughs> uh, and just, they also uh, monitored our nitrogen levels as well, those um, reduced a little bit, but not as much as the phosphorus concentrations. 
So I just wanted to kind of give you that background um, of what happened in the LEAF study. So what that really told us was that leaves are a significant source of phosphorus um, in urban stormwater. So in our, you know, in our urban areas, our cities, and that we can expect a 60% or excuse me, um, about 60% of the phosphorus, our annual load of phosphorus from the urban environment. Again, we're just talking urban um, can come from leaves, which is pretty huge. It also uh, told us, gave us information and data um, that lets us know that, you know, if we can get those leaves out of the street before the rain, again, in the urban environment, in those areas with high um, densities of uh, road trees, those large trees along the street, we can possibly reduce phosphorus by up to 80%. So this is just comparing the area that had no, um, no leaf removal with the area that had leaf removal. Again, the kind of the gold standard. So municipalities would never be able to do this um, to the level that USGS did, but we just wanted kind of that comparison. But that's a pretty huge number. Um, if we can get those leaves out of the street before the rain, we can expect you know up to 80% reduction in the amount of phosphorus um, from, that, um, from that urban environment. Just, you know, again, comparing the leaf removal without the leaf removal. And the What's nice about leaf removal is that it's one of the only things that we can do to reduce the amount of dissolved phosphorus. So there's um, there's total phosphorus and dissolved phosphorus is just um, one part of that, but there's really no other way for us to remove that dissolved phosphorus. Um, so this is really a great option. So we used all this information and you know this is this has been great information for us because we actually have the numbers and the data to support this now. and uh, so we use this to develop our, um, our outreach campaign called Leaf Free Streets for Clean Waters. And the goal of our outreach campaign uh, and this program is to really um, engage residents in getting leaves out of the street before the rain, because we know what a difference it can make. So your municipalities are actually doing a really great job. I know Stoughton has leaf removal. I know they use the vacuum truck, I believe, Tim, uh, to remove those leaves in the fall, which is awesome that you put kind of on, um, on the terrace. Um, so that's really great. I know you use street sweeping as well or street cleaning. Uh, so again, trying to keep those streets clean to make sure that um, whatever's on those streets, including the phosphorus um, and in debris and sediments uh, doesn't end up in our lakes, rivers and streams. So municipalities are doing what they can, but they can't get out there every, you know, right before every storm event. And that's really, that's the critical time. Um, so we've, we've developed this campaign called Leaf Free Streets for Clean Waters um, to really try to engage residents, especially in those areas. So this is kind of a targeted, uh, targeted campaign. Um, you wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't push this campaign in a more rural area or maybe on the outskirts of the city where you're a new development where you just have these, you know, little seedlings um, along the uh, or saplings along the street. Um, but we're really, it's really encouraged um, in those densely populated areas or um, kind of older areas with those dense, that dense tree cover with those large road trees uh, is where we're really trying to push this campaign. So based on this research, we are actually trying to encourage people to actively remove those street leaves before the rain. And we've kind of developed a campaign and tools around this. Uh, it's called Leaf Free Streets for Clean Waters. And we have, um, we have a whole website on it. It's on ripple-effects.com. Uh, so that's kind of a, a Dane County site uh, about stormwater um, and trying to encourage actions to, you know, clear, clean our stormwater and um, reduce our stormwater into our, uh, reduce the quantity of the stormwater. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Uh, and we have all kinds of tools to help. Um, let me, uh, so we have some, we have flyers uh, to, to help people understand the issue. Uh, we have some door hangers to get the word out. We also um, have template articles that we can use as part of, you know, newsletters for neighborhood associations uh, to help get the word out. And what another tool we have that was developed um, because of that study uh, is our Leaf Free Streets for Clean Waters rain alerts. So residents are able to, um, to subscribe for these rain alerts via email or text alerts, and we send them out uh, between October 1st and November 30th. That's the only time we send them out. Um, I'm the one who kind of monitors the weather and sends them out. But when there is a substantial rain event forecasted, um, 
we send out an alert about one to two days before uh, before the rain event is expected. Uh, just as a reminder, saying you know what, it's time to clear, clean those leaves out of the out of the streets uh, if you can. It's, the rain's coming. So uh, that's another tool that we've that people have found very useful and helpful. We actually did a pilot uh, study right before we launched this uh, back in 2016, I believe, with the city of Middleton um, to see people's willingness to do this. And one of the um, one of the comments we got back was that these alerts were really helpful. Um, and you know the fact that they only came between October and November we weren't flooding their emails, we weren't texting them constantly. Um, they were just very timely and just nice reminders to have. So that's and that's one of the tools we have available as far as Leaf Free Streets for Clean Waters too. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of share some of this information with you. Um, and we have a whole partner resources page if you want to get involved, uh, if you need resources, outreach tools, uh, want to sign up for the, for the Leaf Free Streets alerts, you can do that all from, um, from this website. Any questions before I kind of move on to a few other initiatives we have going on? Any questions from anybody? Not so far, you must be doing good. Okay. <laughs> One other uh, tool we do have that I didn't mention, and you may have seen these around uh, Stoughton because we partnered actually with uh, with the city of Stoughton as well as Sustainable, Sustainable Stoughton. Uh, we have um, yard signs as well. Uh, again, the effort it's really to try to um, get the word out there and encourage people to really remove these street leaves. Um, but this is what they look like. Uh, they have all the logos from the city of Stoughton and sustainable Stoughton on there and they're customized to each municipality. Uh, this one again, um, customized to Stoughton. So we're really highlighting whatever watershed we're in. So the Yahara River, um, and then just really um, encouraging the action of removing those street leaves before, uh, before the rain. So those are available, and I know uh, Brett uh, Her Herbert, I believe, or Hebert, excuse me, um, has. I think he still has some available. Or Sue Eddie, you could contact her, or you could contact me if you're interested in any of these tools that we have. Okay. So because I have you here, <laughs> I wanted to also just share some of the other programs that um, that we're involved with. Um, and not necessarily in the fall, but um, in other seasons uh, throughout the year. So. Uh, in late winter, early spring, one of, the th one of the things we really try to encourage um, and promote is the use of native plants and rain gardens, um, actually putting in rain gardens to harvest rainwater and help it to infiltrate rather than have it run off. Uh, that's a great stormwater tool. And we have a program called Plant Dane to help do that. So as part of Plant Dane, we hold a rain garden workshop every year. Uh, it's well, it usually was in person. It was virtual last year. I'm not sure what it's going to look like this year, maybe a hybrid, um, but that happens uh, February, March. And uh, last year it was a, a three part series where people tuned in for about an hour and a half and we um, walk through the whole process of how to build a rain garden and some resources and tools on how to do that. So we have a workshop as part of Plant Dane. Uh, the big part of Plant Dane is our, our native plant sale. So we partner with Agricol down in Evansville. And we're able to provide native plants for, um, for, for pretty cheap. They're $2.25 a plant and you have to order them in, in, um, in packs of four. We have about 50 species available. So again, that's, that's an option. Um, again, trying to, trying to reduce the barrier to, um, to planting native plants um, by kind of covering some of that cost. Um, there's also a free native plants program where school and community groups can apply for our grant program to receive free native plants and um, use those for native gardens or rain gardens. That's part of the program as well. So that's something that's coming up. Um, we usually launch the Plant Dane plant sale in, in February. Again, the rain garden workshop is in February and March. Uh, and then you receive your plants in uh, in late May, early June. So uh, stay tuned for that if you're interested. Um, spring, summer brings with it a lot of presentations. Uh, so I am available doing presentations like this, uh, in-person presentations sometimes if, if COVID allows, uh, and then events. Uh, this is our rainfall simulator. That's my son in the background. I dragged him on that one. Um, we also have a storm drain mural program and Stoughton has taken advantage of that. These are the two storm drain murals that Stoughton received back in uh, 2018. We partnered with the high school on this one on the design. And then um, and then this one was one on Main Street. Um, they 
They usually only last a couple of years. So I don't think we've repainted these yet, but that's something, um, Tim, if you are interested in having those repainted, uh, we can try to do that next year in uh, 2022, you can apply for a repaint. So that's been a really great program to engage, uh, especially school groups and, and other groups. Uh, the goal of that program is really to highlight storm drains they're created to be hidden, they're designed to be hidden, and we want people to start to see them and say, okay, so what goes down there is ending up in our lakes, rivers, and streams. So let's keep them clean and let's keep all anything that enters those storm drains as clean as possible. Uh, we've talked about leaf-free streets, and then SaltWise is one of our programs in the winter time. Uh, we have high concentrations of chlorides getting into our, our waters, uh, and it's coming primarily through winter salt use. Uh, so we're working with contractors and municipalities uh, and residents to try to reduce that salt, that winter salt use, um, because whatever washes off those streets, again, ends up in our lakes, rivers, and streams. And chloride is becoming a, a bigger issue in this area. Chloride concentrations are, are increasing uh, in Dane County. And then I also want to just share some educational resources we have available. Uh, again, I use these as part of presentations, but they're also available for checkout. Our rainfall simulator, it's a great, great tool demonstration that we can use uh, to show how land use impacts water quality. So I'm happy to come out and use this at presentations, at events. Um, you can also check it out. Uh, we also have the Enviroscape, which is our watershed model um, that we use to primarily with kids to help them understand stormwater. And then we have some videos available as well that people can use, um, just kind of basics on stormwater and then um, talking about our rainfall simulator here, uh, just a video demonstration. And then one little uh, plug <laughs> for a program that's coming up and it's uh, called Adopt a Storm Drain. It's a program that we're starting up just the pilot this year, hopefully within the next couple months, I'm working on it right now, Stoughton is one of our pilot communities. Uh, so we are encouraging people to adapt a storm drain in front of, you know, in front of their home near, near them and keep that storm drain clear. So not only to prevent flooding and to prevent, you know, clogging of storm drains, but also to make sure that, um, you know, things that aren't supposed to go down the storm drain aren't going down the storm drain. So we're asking residents to adapt a storm drain near them and keep that, keep that storm drain clear. So uh, that's something that's coming up um, in the next, hopefully, month or two, uh, we'll be launching that in Stoughton. So if that's something you're interested, interested in, please contact me. That's all I have. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I at least want to leave you with my contact information in case you, in case you do have any questions or, or feel free to reach me. And that's our website as well. All right. Thank you very much, Crystal. Are there any questions? I don't hear any questions. So once again, thank you, Crystal. Sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we also appreciate uh, Sue Eddy, uh, who works in our planning department. Hi. Sue set up this meeting. So we, we want to thank Sue for that. And uh, hopefully I can get together with you again, Crystal. We recently formed a sustainability committee and I'm sure they'd be interested in hearing more about that would the be program. Great. Thanks All so right, much. Thank you. Um, bye. bye. Take care. So while we're transitioning, I want to give Sue an opportunity to tell you what Sue does on a daily basis. I'm going to put her on the spot. Oh, we didn't that's rehearse fine. this. So I'm the engineering technician for the city. I work with Rodney, work with the road projects, sidewalks, driveways, and just construction projects that go on every year throughout the city. I think I've met you. You have done some work at your home, yep, with your driveway, and yeah. So, and I also work with Crystal with the stormwater, the importance of stormwater and the police and trying to keep them out of our lakes and rivers and streams. So, yeah. Do you have any questions for Sue? All right. So I'm gonna switch things over here. Put up my stuff. Here, it'll just take me a second to find everything. It's not gonna let me do that.
there anybody, anything on anybody's mind today that you want to talk about? All right, it's not letting me minimize my screen so I can't put up my stuff. Interesting. Well, anyway, um, you know, there's been a lot of activity in Stoughton here. Um, City Council next week, we're going to be talking about the riverfront development with Kurt Brink. Um, when I came in this morning, we were finishing up on a conversation to talk about uh, where we're at as far as a developer's agreement and an offer to purchase and then this TIF request. So we'll be taking that to, to finance committee and then to the city council on Tuesday night. It's already been through the RDA, the redevelopment authority, and we have their blessing. So we believe that that project will move forward in the spring, um, as well as some other work that would be included in that, which would be some stormwater work, some trail work, and then hopefully, um, you know, we'll, we'll be uh, putting the bridge from one side of Mant Park uh, into the development next year. Um, we're also working on um, developments with Kettle Park West. Kettle Park West is out behind Walmart. They're working on phase two. There's about just over 200 single family homes there. They've been partnering with uh, a national, national builder and we're hoping that uh, we'll be seeing some uh, building permits pulled here um, in the next month or two. They're looking at starting up probably about 20 some uh, single family homes this year, and then um, some more, a couple dozen maybe next year, and then some more in 2023. And they're looking kind of even above and beyond that development to a phase three. So they're, they're really ambitious out there. Um, they've also been working on putting together plans for the, uh, some lots next to Walmart across from uh, Kettle Park Senior Living in the hotel. And uh, we've been told that the one retail shop that's going to be in there is going to be a Melio sub shop. And then the other retail location that's going to be in there is going to be a Sherwin Williams paint store. So we're we're excited to see them get started on that project. There's some things they have to work through yet, but they're at a point where they have some people under contract. Probably noticed the Shopco Optical opened up out there recently. So that's uh, next to Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, we're hearing that uh, the Starbucks could open within the next month or so out in front of Pick and Save. And then the work has uh, begun over here on what was used, used to be the Marathon gas station site. Um, so there'll be two fourplex apartment units that'll be going up there. Um, hope, they're hoping to have the, those project, that project completed, you know, yet this year. They, they have a lot of work to do, but they're doing some site work now. So we're excited to get, see that moving ahead. City Council also um, decided to move forward with the final design on the water park down at Mant Park, which involves the dam. So as I explained at past meetings, um, we've done three designs now. The first design was to put a water park in with the dam in. And after some deliberation, it was, it was uh, concerns were raised about bringing people in the harm's way with the dam being there. So they came up with another design with the dam totally out. And we actually had a grant that would uh, maybe help us pay to remove that dam. And then the DNR decided that what we were putting in by their definition was a dam. So based on that, we decided to rescind that $400,000 dam removal grant and then do a third design. The third design um, leaves a cement platform in the water. So when we design the water park, the water level drop, um, instead of being about five feet under normal conditions, will only be two feet. And we feel that that's a better situation um, down at the mill pond and, and really up all the way upstream. When we did the third design, we also uh, did water flow levels all the way up to Lake Higanza. That was one of the concerns that was brought up by the residents in the town of Pleasant Springs that on the initial two designs, we did not do any water level data um, on those um, design. So we did that for the third design so we could understand what the water levels would look like 
under normal conditions, under high flow conditions, and under low flow conditions, such as what we've had this year. And we've you know, we've discovered that the impact up there, depending on precipitation, um, could be anywhere from a couple inches up to um, eight inches up in the Bay Area there, and that's what they're most concerned about. So, you know, we've tried to address the concerns that were brought to us by the riparian property owners and people upstream, especially. Um, the concern was the water level the lack of data going upstream. And then they had two other concerns. Uh, one would be they'd like to have more public hearings. And the other one is that they would like to see us do an environmental impact study. So we have another grant in for this dam reconstruction and that's a federal grant. And if that's approved, we will be required to do an environmental impact study, which will address one of the concerns that have been brought, whether or not the wildlife will change better or worse or the same. And then the other one would be is if we receive that the grant and as well as when the DNR gets to the, the part where they're approving our final design, more than likely there's going to be a public hearing that will be um, required for each of those steps. So we've really worked hard to try to address the concerns of folks upstream. Uh, we understand that not everybody is going to be on board with this program, but we believe that um, doing the dam reconstruction is the best thing to improve the water quality. Uh, right now, the water is stagnant. It it's basically it holds bacteria. Um, it also allows us to address sediment that has been contaminated over the years by capping that, which will increase more parkland, give us more trail opportunities, improve fishing. Uh, working with Dane County, it will also give them more flexibility on flood control. With climate change, we believe that um, based on the based on the expert studies that uh, we'll have more heavy rain events. And when we do, you know, Dane County has a project going on that uh, will be dredging the river, uh, making it deeper and wider along the channel. So if we do have a heavy event like we did in 2018, the water will be able to flow faster all the way down to Stoughton, and that will help. Uh, alleviate the uh, the backup that occurred on the isthmus. So it's a real, uh, you know, ambitious effort by Dane County, but we also believe that's the right thing to do. I know there's some concerns that, you know, the city should be working with the county on their program. I would basically say that if people have them concerns, they should be, you know, talking to the county and not to the city um, about their project. We're, we're focused on ours, they're focused on theirs. We think they'll be mutually beneficial um, long term for the for the health of the river and for really flood control and damage control in the Madison Lakes cause as they back up. So that's where we're at on those issues. Um, there'll be plenty of other things that we'll be working on um, in our budget process. Uh, we had our second meeting last night. We have um, a lot of road construction we want to do um, here locally. And we use, uh, as Brett has been here in the past, he uses a PACER rating to evaluate our road conditions. So we're working hard, um, you know, to take care of the roads that get the most traffic in coordination with Stoughton Utilities to make sure that once we tear up a road and replace it, we don't have to come back a few years later and redo it. So one of the big projects next year will be Milwaukee Street. I know that came up here at the last meeting I did verify that's on the list. Hopefully that one makes the cut. Um, it's in bad shape. Um, we've also been having several conversations with the DOT about their project. Um, they have three roundabouts that are going in next year. So we're working with them on those projects to fine tune them, understand uh, what we have to do to maintain the roundabouts and uh, what we can do to improve pedestrian and bicycle safety along the roundabouts as well as their uh, planning and design team for the corridor project, which will go all the way basically from Coachman's to McFarland. So we're working with them on that project as well and trying to accommodate um, some development that we hope will happen on 51 West with Bob Dvorak. So those are kind of the basic things we're working on. I mentioned earlier when Crystal was on the call, we do have a sustainability committee. We had our first meeting um, about a week or so, a couple of weeks ago now, 
and we have nine community members and two city council members and the community members all bring expertise to that committee. So we're really excited about the possibilities of putting that plan together. Um, I reached out to um, a person that had helped us do a strategic plan for the Stoughton Opera House and for the um, Chamber of Commerce. And she connected us to somebody that was recently hired by Dane County that could help us put together a survey to really understand what's important to community members as far as sustainability and also to help educate people about the concerns we have, such as what we just saw during Crystal's presentation. So we're really excited about where that's going to go. Uh, we recently had two listening sessions on racial equity. So we had an opportunity to hear some stories from people that have had bad experiences in the past. Um, by listening to their stories, we can kind of learn from them and figure out what we can do moving forward um, to make sure that people are treated you know, respectfully within our community and what we can do to provide opportunities to really not just people of color, but all people in general in Stoughton. So really a couple of things that really come into play when you talk about that. Um, to me, one of the main things is is affordable housing. Um, you know, having a, a stable home life is really critical for, for people um, to be successful, especially students in their classrooms. So we're working with Habitat for Humanity to put up four duplexes over on Lincoln Avenue. And then we're also talking uh, to Bob Dvorak about possibly putting in some some workforce housing in this project out on 51 West on the West side. And then we're working with a local group called the HATS, which is a housing advocacy team of Stoughton. And they're trying, they're working on providing uh, rental assistance for those in need and try to help people that may have, um, may have had some challenges in the past with their, with their landlords to really help them clean up their record so they can uh, secure um, rental and then, you know, long-term, you know, hopefully they can, they can uh, eventually buy a home here in Stoughton. So we're, we're trying to put together some strategies to, to help people in need and help people be successful in our community. Um, you can see around the senior center, we've been doing some work here in the parking lot. That's probably gonna be a couple more weeks. Uh, they ran into some surprises when they started uh, grinding out the surface out here on the parking lot. And we took a look at it and said, we're gonna to have to invest a little bit extra money in order to do it right. We don't wanna put it back together and have to deal with it again soon. So there's gonna be probably a delay in finishing the project, but hopefully uh, they'll get it done here in the next couple, three weeks. And then that'll be ready before the snow flies. Um, I think that Crystal also mentioned the leaves. That's gonna be something that's gonna be coming soon. One of the points I wanted to make uh, regarding our presentation is that the programs that we work with with the county helps us secure grants for some of our equipment. And part of the, part of the deal is, is in order to secure them grants, we're required to pick up leaves so many times a year and, and commit to other strategies to try to reduce phosphorus in our community. So anything that you know you can do in your homes or others can do um, is appreciated. We try to keep the leaves off the road. So if you're raking in the fall here, keep them on the park row. So when they come to suck them up, they can suck them off the grass and not off the road. Um, that's one thing that really helps. So that's pretty much all I really wanted to cover unless there's any questions today. Anybody have any questions? You're kind of a quiet bunch today. All right. Well, once again, I want to thank Sue for we're setting up the presentation from Crystal. And uh, next month, the plan is to have myself and Dr. Onsager and uh, Dan DeGroote from Stoughton Health here as well. So we're hoping to have the three of us here. Um, and then uh, if anything comes up before between now and then, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I try to make myself available to answer any questions um, in case there's something out there that's bugging you or you don't understand. Uh, you know, that's what we try to do is, is, is respond to 
concerns and, and address them as best as we can. All right, well, thanks again for the Senior Center and with uh, especially Holly Camacho for helping us set up our, uh, our IT today and also our IT department was very helpful. So hopefully uh, this recording will turn out and we'll be able to, to air it. So thanks again for being here.